Hey guys, how's it going? So here's the lineup for today. We've got a few different things. We're starting out here in the orchard. I wanna harvest the rest of our Alberta peaches because I've noticed that a few of them have started to drop to the ground. So we want to get them before that happens to too many of them. I also have some strawberries to pick out here, I think, I hope. I use a lot of strawberries. I usually make a smoothie at least once a day with some of our frozen strawberries. So I'd like to freeze as many of those as possible before the season ends. I've got a few Russian sage to plant, just three denim and lace. And then Aaron and I are going to be installing a weather system that he bought. It's the Tempest weather system. Let me show you what it looks like. So this is it right here. So you install it on a pipe and it just tracks all things weather. Um, so anyway, Aaron will be able to speak more on that when we get to that part of the project, but you install it on top of a pipe. Sort of like we've installed some of our hose links, you know, just resting on top of a one inch galvanized pipe. So we're gonna run and grab a length of pipe and I think we're going to install this behind our barn. I think it has to be close to Wi-Fi, um, so we need to have it near that. And I think behind the barn is going to be the least interrupted space in terms of, like it's open back there. There's not a lot, you know, stopping any kind of weather tra tracking. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what we've got going on today. Ooh, also excitement. I have one Honeycrisp apple on the tree. You know, most of them were uh, taken by worms, so I stripped the whole tree minus one that was clean. I think it's ready to harvest. Look at this beautiful apple. Look at it. And Honeycrisp apples are ones that you want to harvest in September. And it says ideally you want to pick them when there's still a tiny bit of green, which there's a tiny bit of green left. So let's, Woo! oh, isn't that beautiful? I figured we'd take this to the house and cut it up and maybe we can share it with the kids, see what they think about it. I also need to harvest nectarines, but I will leave that for another day. This though makes me so happy. The Fuji apples aren't quite as far along. Starting to color up a little bit, you'll notice some worm damage on some of them. I might just try to cut around that because it's not too bad. And we might just dehydrate a bunch of these. But I thought I would just leave these on the tree and you know, see what happens. They're looking pretty good. But the Albertas are looking great. Oh, they just, they smell amazing. I've already canned a few quarts of sliced peaches. I think I'm gonna do some more sliced and halved peaches. I might freeze some of them. They smell so good. Now they are a bit undersized. Last year they were quite a bit bigger than this, but last year uh, we lost most of our crop in a freeze. Like when the blooms were still out, uh, we had a cold snap and uh, I wasn't able to get out here and cover the trees. So I lost most of them, but there were a few left on the very interior of the tree and those sized up huge. But you know, I thinned these early in the season and then I should have come out and thinned them more and I didn't. And I showed you guys uh, recently before we had a storm come through, I thought I better get out here and at least thin them at this point, even though I know, um, you know, the, the fruit's not gonna size up much more. But I do think that they did size a, a tiny bit after I did that. So anyway, I've got baskets out here, we'll see what we get from this harvest. Before I harvest the peaches in the tree, I actually go through the ones on the ground because sometimes they're perfect. Like this one just must have dropped between last night and this morning. And we'll save all of those. That one looks amazing. Anything that looks like this gets to either stay out here or I'm gonna maybe come back out here with a bucket later and gather them up and Bethany's pigs can have them. There we go, quite a number. Filled up two baskets, which is awesome. Now I did want to show you what the insides of these look like. So these are the Albertas that we just picked and they've got the yellow flesh and they are freestone, which means that when you, well, I tore mine apart, but when you usually use a knife and cut them apart in a much more clean way, uh, the pit falls right off the flesh. See that? 
it's really easy to remove them so they're really easy to can and then this one right here is the snow beauty white peach so you can see the difference here this one's also a freestone so the pit removes very easily they're so so tasty both of these so good oh my gosh you know the thing about peaches though i don't really care for the furry skin that they have so if i'm out here i kind of have to like um, use my teeth to scrape the interior out and then i just toss the peel that's why I like nectarines so much and I prefer eating those fresh over peaches because the skin is really soft and tender and you can just eat the whole thing, the whole thing without it being a huge mess. So anyway, that's why I'm leaving the nectarine for now. We'll eat fresh off the tree for a little bit and then I'll probably do some freezing with those later. And then you can see over here, I left about 20 or so peaches on the tree because they weren't quite ripe, which is great. We can use those for fresh eating as well. And then that's my little pile of the ones that were too damaged really to do much with. Um, so those will be gathered up and given to the pigs. So now I wanna see what we've got for strawberries out here. I don't think there's a tremendous amount, but I did see a little red peeking through when we were driving around last night. Peaches are in the shade. Here's our berry baskets. Okay, so here's what we've got for strawberries. The first ones that are so huge, and we're actually gonna be digging up the runners and uh, Bethany's got a friend that wants to take all of them, which is great. So she's planning on doing that this week, which will clean up the row, like the walking paths here. Uh, but the first two varieties are the honey eye and all stars, which are a June bearing. So there are no strawberries on these plants, but as we get further down here, there are three other patches. So right here, and you can see we're dealing with some chlorosis. Strawberries are particularly prone to that in our area. See that, the dark green veining. So we'll need to come through and give them some chelated iron. But we've got seascapes right here, and then we've got quinaults. See, they've got a completely different look. The leaves look a lot healthier, but they have started to scorch. And honestly, I'm not overly impressed with the size and shape of the berries. The flavor is good, and they're just kind of an old heritage variety that have been around forever. Um, but I think when we get ready to do our more permanent strawberry area, which I do want to build like a waist high raised bed to do strawberries in, I will probably forego the quinaults. But they're here for now. And let's see, is there any, any action in here? Doesn't look like much of anything. And then the last section here are seascapes as well. I don't see a tremendous amount either. We might, we might fill up one cup, if that. Better than nothing. <laughs> I knew I had seen some out here. Seascapes. Big and beautiful. Well, I've had more productive harvests in the past. I think the kids must have beat me to the berries, which honestly makes me really happy. It's one of their favorite things to do, to come out here and pick berries. I'll probably just give these to the kids because I don't want to put a whole freezer pan or a pan in the freezer just to freeze a small amount. Pretty nice sized berries though. They're beautiful. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to do for harvesting this morning because this will take me a while and I'll probably do that this evening, um, process all these peaches, but I do want to get the Russian sage planted out. Now this is one of my favorite perennials. I have a few that are just go-tos that I plant in a lot of different locations just because of how tough they are, the kind of color they produce, and the lack of maintenance, which Russian sage checks all those boxes. And this one in particular, I've planted other varieties and I do like the big standard older variety too. And in certain applications where you need a taller variety, it's just beautiful. But the denim and lace stays more compact. So it's like two and a half to not even quite three feet tall. And then maybe just about three feet wide and it stays really thick and it looks robust. It doesn't flop over. Now, if you do have Russian sage that has flopped over and you just are not sure why, Typically it's because they're not getting enough sun or they're getting too much water or they're fertilized. They do not want to be fertilized. They're just tough as nails, drought tolerant once established. So usually like we'll plant these, give them regular water like we do everything else the first season. And then we can start cutting water after that point. After they've had a chance to root in, they really don't want a lot of water, a lot of moisture. They definitely don't want to be sitting in it. Uh, so we're just going to go put these in a full sun location out in the garden. The other thing about these too, uh, no deadheading, they start blooming like middle of summer and then they go all the way through a frost and you don't ever have to go clean them up or anything. They're just really nice that way. That's another reason why I like to plant things like hydrangeas, sedum, echinacea, rudbeckia, those type of late season things that just don't require anything from me all season. 
except for maybe being cut back once in the season, that's it. I like plants like that. Oh, the dahlias are gorgeous. I'm enjoying them so much. Okay, so we've got Russian sage on both sides of the walkway over here, but I can't remember if I've got any on the other side. We also have some room right here for some color. That's some denim and lace we planted earlier this season in a nice drift. There's some more. I think this is the variety called Sage Advice, similar, but different a bit. We're gonna head to the other side. Saffron Finch Supertunia. New one for next year. If you see it, buy it. It's awesome, I love it. So we've got the denim and lace on either side of this walkway. Isn't it gorgeous? And it just looks like that for most of the most of the summer and fall. I just love that about this plant. And I'm thinking I want some right in here. We've got quick fire hydrangeas. There's a new Wygela right there. There's the tidy Tim spruce. And I'm thinking maybe a few of these right in here. Stand back and take a look. Yeah, it might be kind of nice to have that spikier texture and the purple blooms, of course. I'm just a huge fan of purple in the garden. I love it. You can pair so many different things with it. look really pretty right there a little trio and so you know this hydrangea will fill in the tiny tim only gets four feet wide and at this point it's about two so it'll only grow over about another foot so i think these will be just barely touch in the end what i'll do is i'll plant a drift of something right in front of like kind of the middle russian sage and it'll curve around the front of the last one and then I'll start something lower, some kind of a lower ground covery type thing, starting in front of the first one and then curving around the front of the spruce here. I think that's what I'll do. It evolves over time. And this whole willy-nilly approach to gardening has been really fun. It's been um, different for me because usually I, I skew more formal in the, the kind of gardens that I'm drawn to, but more and more, I've been liking a little bit more of a natural look. And Erin and I were kind of talking about that the other night, like whether or not we would have done this differently out here. We had a rough idea because we had to know where the road was gonna go, our driveway. We had to know where the cut flower garden was gonna go because I, we knew we wanted those things in the orchard and so, so on and so forth. But all the areas out here, <laughs> there's zero plan. Like I had no idea where any of the big stuff was gonna go. Uh, we just kind of get things and, Think that's a good spot for it and hoping in the end that by kind of applying the you know looking for the four colors principles red blue green and yellow um, also making sure that there's good bone structure for winter and that's something that we'll be working on for a long time making sure there's evergreens everywhere and ornamental grasses and things that look pretty in the winter making sure we have four seasons of interest as long as you're kind of thinking of all those things along the way when you pick out spots to put things I think in the end we'll end up with something real pretty. Okay, it is weather station time. So I'm gonna go grab Aaron, take the peaches inside, and we'll get that worked out. All right guys, so we just drove around trying to decide the best place for the weather station because you kind of want it unimpeded mm -hmm. by like a ton of stuff, a ton of structures or trees, that kind of thing. I think we're gonna put it behind the barn, which is originally where we thought it should go. But do you know all the things that this tracks? Not off the top of my head. Okay. So it's the Tempest, yeah. right? Okay, so light sensor there's a haptic rain sensor which looks like it's maybe the next one down there's a sonic wind sensor which is underneath in this little section right here there's a temperature and humidity sensor which is these ridges right here uh -huh. solar powered oh not battery right powered here. yeah oh that's awesome i thought uh, for sure it was battery powered do you have to face it a certain direction like yeah this, i think this you side? face this probably south you face which one uh the solar power i'm guessing you face that south oh sure um i think that's it Nice, so this thing just kind of rests. Well, there's a little um, mount that we put at the bottom. There's two mounts. One that has the kind of adapter mm -hmm. to slide it down onto this one inch galvanized pipe. And the other one is to uh, mount it on top of a four by four post, whichever one you want to or do. Or really anything flat, I think. Yeah, we figured this would be the best way to do it to begin with because we're not gonna concrete it 
in, concreted in, is that yeah. right? Cemented in. Yeah, sure. Uh, so that we can move it in case we feel like there's a better location. But it does need to be within range of Wi-Fi. So we were a little bit limited. We've got Wi-Fi access at the house, the barn, and the Hartley. So we figured being close to the barn would be the best. I don't know. All Ready right. Ready to go I am. big hole? Yes. Okay. So that's a 10-footer right there. Paul yeah. has spray painted the bulk of it black, which is nice. So we'll put the silver in down in the ground. And Aaron has got the auger. That's the two inch auger there. This is one of those four, like 48 inch augers that we bought that we never oh, use. Yeah. Oh, well, great Figured, time to use yeah, it. Yeah, now's the time to use it when you actually have to go deep. Yeah. So we're thinking just right here along the fence, you're going to hit concrete if you're too close to that post. So like right it, here maybe? Almost, no, because I feel like you're going to get close to the water. I feel like you need to be right here. Do we just, can we just shift that over? Can we just do it right here? Uh, we can, we'll be able to see it. It's all right. Okay. Oh, that's going in smooth. Yeah. You had the boxwood sitting here. Oh yeah. We just so, moved those plants that were sitting over there. They were sitting here, so they were getting watered here. Um, should we mount this thing before we like, put the tempest Probably. on first? Oh, yeah. I could go grab it. So it's that piece yeah. there, right? Then this is stuff that goes inside. So does this piece have to come off and then that piece go on? Yeah. And this, this piece right here, I'm going to open this. Hold on. There's an on off switch here. Oh, on. Oh, here we go. Very, very nice. <laughs> so what is this? So it goes from your router to this, to this, to this. How does this plug in? Like With the power. I know, but where does it go in? I don't see any access. Oh, right oh, for crying out loud. How did I miss that? Okay. So we put that inside the studio. Yeah. Okay. We got everything we need. Okay. I think this goes on first. This slides on. Like that. Nice. Well. I didn't quite get it straight. Well, it's okay. We got to pack it in. We go like that. Yeah. It's almost straight. I'm not super worried about Close it. Close enough. Like, yeah, oh, do we face it right up. though? Do we need to twist it? That looks exposed. Yeah. Well, now do you need to, do you have the app on your phone? No, not yet. Okay, that's the next step. We need to get the app on our phones. Yeah, you don't even really notice it back there. Not really. Okay, this is the app. So, get. So you just had to create an account. Yep, and then enable Bluetooth. Okay, find a good spot indoor. Okay, now we want to put the plug in that other piece. Done. On my desk, it's all messy. Oh, I already turned it on. So hopefully okay. that was okay. Oh, I need to make sure this is the same number. Okay, it wants me to set my location. I'm glad you're doing this. You would have lost me at, you need to download an app. Okay, so the app is saying that, what now? It, uh, we need to make sure it's turned on and blinking green, which it is. Okay. So maybe I need to be closer to this. Let me hit retry searching for devices oh it, it worked it oh, went good. through here let me get this for you what, what's the purpose of that so it doesn't fly off the top it just uh like locks it the more you twist it gotcha okay now it wants me to set up wi-fi well i guess you know the history says no data available but this is going to be the most interesting part for me is being able to look back and see averages yeah you know or like how how gusty the wind actually was. How much rain we got in the last storm. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, right. So we can't really rate it until we've used it for a little while, but you yeah. did say it was on the expensive side. Yeah, it was like $300. Mm. Um, it looked like it was highly rated and a lot of people were recommending it and it just looked like kind of a good one. So I went for it. We'll hope for the best. So we'll be reporting back after we've had a chance to use it for a little while. I think it'll be the most interesting after we get a storm uh, because we can compare it, you know, weather report versus what we actually got. 
sure. that sort of thing to see if it's even comparable or see if it's close. So anyway, that is it for today, you guys. Just a little bit of harvesting, a little bit of planting, a little bit of weather station. I'm gonna go process those peaches. I probably won't film it. It's just more canning and I don't know how much canning you guys can take. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be slicing up the peaches, putting them in an extra light syrup. I do a half cup of sugar and eight cups of water. So it's like the very lightest of syrup. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one.